we are going to discuss everything about robotics and how can you become a robotics engineer let's go cool so hello everyone welcome back to my youtube channel we have kajal with us so i am sure that most of the people watching this will already know you because of the amazing work that you are doing but still for the audience can you give us a brief introduction about yourself sure firstly thank you so much muskan for having me on your channel for those of you who don't know my name is kajal i'm a robotic software engineer and as muskan mentioned i have a youtube channel where i talk about robotics have some tutorials and also do a few live events where you get to interact and ask questions yes guys definitely check out her youtube channel she has some amazing content on robotics right thank you so much and make sure you're subscribing to muskan's channel right now <laughs> yes both of our channels <laughs> yes so kajal i have seen that most of the people have this myth that robotics is just about making robots and everything so can you tell us that what robotics is actually is and what does a robotics engineer do what is the role of a robotics engineer absolutely so firstly yes robotics is a humanoid but as she said there's much more to it than that it's not always a human kind of robot that you're working with you could be working with mobile robots you could be working with manipulators that are huge robotic arms usually used in the industry so now for example one of the companies i worked with we had robotic scrubbers these gigantic scrubbers that were manually driven we put in a bunch of sensors automated it and made it into a robot now when it comes to what does a robotics engineer do depends on which part of the which sub field of robotics you are in but essentially you could be building the robot you could be working on the control system you could be on the software side working on navigation perception computer vision so many domains out there but essentially your job is to complete the task through the use of robot now it could be for example going from point a to point b so how are you going to drive the robot what if there is an obstacle how do you go about it how do you see the world around you you get all this sensor information for example everyone thinks oh let's just put a camera on and you're good to go but the thing is you get a camera you're getting image or video you still have to process it like your brain does to figure out what exactly is in front of you is the path clear where you want to go is this what the object that you were looking for so on and so forth Oh it seems so interesting field like i've never ever explored this field but yeah it sounds really interesting definitely yeah so, it is uh, interesting i absolutely love doing robotics it's super fun and if that is something that interests you or any of the audience definitely check it out yeah there is a lot of you know like i've seen like 10 out of like 1 out of 10 people are doing are going in this field like i do not see a lot of students going in this field at least in india it is the scenario these days i see yeah so apart from that is there any qualification that is required or that is mandatory for being a robotics engineer like btech master or something So I would say there's no mandatory. For example, like if you're a doctor, you definitely need the degree and you need to qualify. Or if you're a lawyer, you need to get that certificate. But that is not true for robotics. Hmm. I've seen people who've done PhD, masters, B Tech, and I've also seen people who've only cleared their high school and are working in the field of robotics. For hmm. robotics, it's most important that you have the knowledge and the skill. Knowledge is knowing the algorithm, how everything works. and skills is being able to code and all of those things so that combination is important now that you can either do on your own or go through an institution to get that degree it could be bachelor's it could be masters it could be anything so for me i didn't know how to to pursue robotics until i was doing my bachelor's in electronics and telecommunication and then i was like okay i want to do robotics i didn't exactly know how to go about it which is why i ended up going for a masters and back then there wasn't a lot of scope in india which is why i chose to come to the us and did my masters in robotics but yes you guess you can choose either to do bachelor's or masters whatever works for you who oh, okay so are there any special programs like suppose i am not from any college as you mentioned that even a high school student so are there any particular programs or a particular way through which a person who is not in some college can apply for such jobs or something or directly they can apply from job portals normally directly you can apply you don't specifically need that mm -hmm. being said 
So in India, there aren't a lot of bachelor's program in robotics to the best of my knowledge. So yeah. you would often end up going for other engineering fields from which you can pursue robotics. It could mm -hmm. be mechanical, electronics, computer science, let me see, mechatronics. It could be any of those fields because you have to remember robotics is actually a combination of all of these fields. And so mm -hmm. you can take any of those and pursue robotics. Okay, cool. That is really interesting. So apart from that, robotics have a lot of subfields, which many people are not aware of. So can you tell us briefly, because obviously like they're really elaborate fields, right? So briefly, can you tell what all subfields are there? And like, how can a person decide what subfield that person has to, you know, pursue their career in if they're confused? Yeah, sure. So when it comes to subfields on if the major ones are like hardware and software. When it mm -hmm. comes to hardware, you've gotten designing the robot controls. And then when it comes to software side, you've got perception, navigation. So now again, perception has computer vision, working with LIDARs or time of flight cameras. When it comes to navigation, it's path planning, localization, mapping. And then again, some of these fields kind of intersect as well. So for example, another subfield is machine learning. So sometimes you'll see someone who's applying machine learning to path planning, or as you might have popularly seen machine learning and computer vision combined. So again, there are a lot of subfields. You can end up going into one of them. You can end up doing a combination of them. So for example, if someone ends up going in path planning at some point in time, they might also start doing localization. So it's right. often a combination and those are the subfields. Now, when it comes to finding out, one is definitely see your interest. If there is something that particularly piques your interest, go try ahead. And that's the second thing. Try and see if that is something you like. It's very easy mm -hmm. to look at something and be like, oh, robotics sounds so cool. But until you do it, you don't know if you actually like it. Mm -hmm. So I would say do projects. Like that is one of the best ways to figure out if you're interested in it or not. I did it that way. So when I was in my bachelor's, I started doing projects using Arduino. And that's how I knew, oh, okay, robotics is something that actually interests me. And I kept going ahead. Another thing I would give as an advice is go for robotics competition, especially if you're in bachelor's right now, trying to figure out what you want to do. And this is not just for US, it's also true for India. There are a lot of robotics competitions. There's Robocon, there's, um, I'm trying to think. I can't bring them on the top of my head right now. But there are a lot of robotics competitions that you can participate even from India. So mm -hmm. definitely check them out. I know I have mentioned some of them and interviewed people who did that on my channel. If you if that is something that interests you, check it out. But yeah, the, the thing with doing robotics competition is you actually get to work on a particular project. Mm -hmm. And it's not something that you're working for a week or two weeks. It's a commitment of a couple of months. Plus, because there's a deadline, because there's a competition, you will follow through. It's very difficult to do things on your own, especially if you've got college, you've got a personal life and all of those things. It can sometimes be tricky to find motivation. But if you're part of a competition, it's like you're doing it in a group. You've got each other. You've got deadlines to meet. And trust me, it's a really good experience. Do try it out. Right. And I think if you're participating in competitions, I, I believe in networking a lot. So after GHC, I'm like community matters the most. So I think if you're uh, participating in a competition, you will find so many like minded people uh, with you working with you. So that will be a great asset, I think. Right. Uh, yeah, I would say definitely you will get to network a lot. You will get to meet people and you will also get to meet other students who are competing from other schools or colleges for the same mm -hmm. competition. And you get to meet people who are mentoring in this competition. Plus, there are a lot of times when companies also come at this competition. So if you're looking for internship or full-time jobs, it's a great way to connect with those people. And the same goes for when you're job hunting. If you have a robotics competition in your resume, it's a huge asset. Right. And that is something that not everyone does, right? So everyone yeah. is participating in hackathons, everyone is doing this, but participating in a robotics competition, I literally haven't seen anyone do it, at least in my college. So, yeah. 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 And one thing also I wanted to ask, is it okay for a student, like, suppose he's not, he or she is not able to figure out that what field that person wants to pursue? Is it okay, like, even if his college is over? 
but he's not able to figure out like what to pursue like his robotics career in is that fine or you should like before a btech gets over or before your degree gets over you should like have that thing clear at what field you have to pursue your robotics in like sub field basically so i'm a huge believer of you can change your career at any point of time i've done it a couple of times in my life right. so it's absolutely fine if you don't know which sub field within robotics you want to do or even the fact that you want to do robotics or not that being said it's definitely advantages if you know things beforehand like for example by i would say generally for okay if you are in your bachelor's you have four years your first year and second year is really good for exploring and trying to figure out what you want to do your third year is when you start focusing and narrowing down and then fourth year is all about executing the plan you know trying to get a job or figuring out you want to go for masters or you want to do completely something else so that is an ideal path but doesn't mean you have to follow it it's absolutely okay. fine even after you finish your bachelor's you don't know what you want to do see the best advice i can give is try literally pick a sub field if you can't decide do a couple of projects in that particular sub field and see if you like it or not if yes mm -hmm. then keep going if not then change the sub field so for example let's say you choose path planning do a couple of projects like you can do the simplest thing that is implement an algorithm called a star or breadth first search depth first search and just see if that is something that intrigues you yes then keep going mm -hmm. no okay try something else maybe try computer vision look into open cv and see if you can do one or two projects that's absolutely the best way to figure out what it is that you like to do oh, okay i have also implemented this algorithm in one of my uh, subjects i never knew that this is a part of robotics field oh nice <laughs> which algorithm again yeah this a star and breadth first search algorithm it did not interest me so now i know <laughs> robotics is not for me yes so apart from that i have seen in one of your video that you mentioned that you have also been a recruiter at ghc right so as a recruiter what are uh, the top five skills when you like when a student is interviewing for a robotics engineer role so top five skills that as a recruiter you see in that student so the first thing if people don't know ghc is a grace hopper conference very popular and they have an element called career fair where you can literally go talk to people from a particular company and see if they're hiring and have a conversation with recruiters or engineers now when it comes to recruiting for robotics some of the things that we look for i would say it kind of classifies in these three sub buckets knowledge skills and attitude when it comes to knowledge you should know how robots work you should know the algorithm for your particular sub field then when it comes to skills firstly you should know how to code and i know a lot of people have this question what if i'm going to be on the hardware side what if i'm doing mechanical engineering i would say still know how to code even if you're not going to be doing coding 100% of the time it's a huge advantage to know how to code even if you're going for hardware or mechanical positions if you're mostly for those of you who don't know ghc is grace hopper conference and within this conference there's an element called career fair where essentially you can go and talk to a company either a recruiter or engineers and see if they're hiring and have a conversation about that now to the second part of the question what is it that recruiters are looking for when it comes to robotics position i would say it kind of goes into three buckets knowledge skills and attitude when it comes to knowledge you should know how robots work you should know how the algorithm you should know about the algorithm in your particular sub field so for example let's say you're going for perception you should know how lidars work you should know how time of flight cameras work you should know how sonars work not just that because you're in the field of robotics you should kind of have an idea also of how in general robots work some little bit of idea is a good idea to have is a good thing to have right. now second is skills when it comes to skills the number one thing is coding now i know a lot of you are going to be like hey what if i'm from mechanical engineering and i'm going to go for hardware positions even then it's an absolutely big advantage that you know how to code and if you're going for software side of things you should know how to code now the second thing is even though you might not end up using data structures and algorithms most of the time when it comes to robotics interviews 
you will end up doing data structure and algorithm questions lead code hacker rank questions those do get asked so i would say definitely learn data structures and algorithms now in terms of okay. other skills ross it's a great tool to know it's great if you know some simulation softwares be it gazebo or vbots then if you're going for a particular a job within robotics know if there are any specific tools that are being used so for example if you're going for computer vision open cv is a tool that you would be expected to know other than that it'd be good if you know how to use linux i cannot stress this enough i know being in india we're all used to mostly using windows but if you're serious about robotics switch to linux switch to any ubuntu operating system it will help you a lot and you should know how to use linux uh, command terminals because that is something you will do on the job yeah. other than that uh, let me see yeah, those are the top ones that i can think of and when it comes to attitude make sure you're someone who wants to learn who's eager to try things you know how to test and you're open to you know doing your code testing and going through the entire process and i think this is why it's very advantageous when you've done internships or robotics competition because you've gone through the whole cycle that's yeah. a great way to show that okay you are interested and you know what it takes to get things working i hope that helps yeah that was really like insightful and also as you mentioned ghc i'd like to just uh, put this that ghc applications are open like i think yesterday only it opened okay, nice. so if you're watching this guys please apply it asap before the deadline yeah so i just wanted to put that yeah no definitely it's tough to get in and it's an amazing experience mm -hmm. i've been there a couple of times definitely apply yeah yes uh, as you have mentioned projects and in your videos as well i've seen that you emphasize a lot on projects so why is it so like what is so important about pro doing projects and like people are generally confused like there are so many projects on uh, like if you search robotics projects there will be a list of 100 projects so what are those three projects that a beginner can work on he or she starting with robotics yeah absolutely so i would say the reason projects are important is because that is how you will develop the skill so for example you can learn how to code you can learn how to write if else statement but it's until you do an application you are not really internalizing those learnings and trust me it's and trust me when i say that when you do a project it actually starts making much more sense than just writing if else for simple assignments now when it comes to beginner projects okay so the first thing i want to say is there are two ways you can go about it one is actually invest in hardware so you can go for either arduino or raspberry pi these are very beginner friendly and makes it very easy for you to get started now if you don't want to invest in hardware because i know money is not something everyone can spend you can go for simulation softwares and they are completely free both gazebo vbots i think vrep i'm not sure if vrep is free but definitely gazebo and vbots is free but the third one is vrep if you want to look into it these three softwares you can use them to simulate similar conditions that you will see for hardware and do projects now when it comes to three beginner friendly projects these are the three i would suggest number one is obstacle avoidance number two is wall following and number three is line following and if you want to complicate it a little bit further you can do line following with obstacle avoidance and these are good beginner friendly where you understand how the logical flow works that okay you've got a sensor you're getting some data convert to information make a decision and then give motor commands so your robot will move forward okay it sounds everything sounds so new to me i've never explored this field at all don't worry they're not super tough they're simple and that is why very beginner friendly and then after that you kind of start deciding okay what you want to do and then do projects in that particular subfield so for example okay. let's say you want to go into perception so you will add on a lidar and see how to process lidar information and then kind of take it from there right and i think projects will also help us build our resume right suppose suppose you are going somewhere or asking a recruiter for something or so you have to show what you have already done right so i think projects will help you learn and also like add up to your resume 
absolutely i agree 100% projects are a great way to show that okay you know this concept so recruiters are impressed plus even when you are interviewing they're going to ask you questions about those projects it's like mm-hmm. saying hey i know lidar versus saying hey i used lidar to build a map and they can be like oh okay how did you do it and then you can say that yeah you know this is the kind of information i was getting mm-hmm. i did a grid based map and so on and so forth so yes i agree 100% to projects and it's yes. a huge benefit on your resume yeah so talking about india can you people are not really aware what all companies are hiring for a robotics engineer role because i see sd front end back end roles but robotics engineer uh, a lot of companies i have at least not seen on linkedin as well so can you tell a few companies in india that hire for robotics role or even outside india yeah sure so yes i would agree you know when i was starting out there weren't a lot of robotics companies or at least i didn't know of them Mm-hmm. So one company that definitely comes to my mind is called Grey Orange. I believe they're based in Delhi and they also have a couple of offices outside India. So the one thing I would say is use LinkedIn. So the thing is mm-hmm. on LinkedIn when you start following one robotics company or two robotics company, LinkedIn will start suggesting more robotics companies to you right. and that way you can kind of build a database of robotics companies. And the second thing I want to say is I definitely see this as a struggling point which is why in my newsletter I started putting in more uh, robotics job positions that are also available in India. And um yes yeah, so if you want do check it out. The other thing I would say is LinkedIn. Just you know start following one company and you'll see a bunch of them. I've seen a few robotics company in India come up with agriculture uh, agriculture uh, robotics used in agriculture such as fruit picking Uh, spraying pesticides and so on and so forth. So yeah, check those fields out. Right, and also I saw your post today in which you you mentioned that you know whatever resources for robotics, uh, like people in robotics field is there. So definitely check out Kajal's LinkedIn as well. Like she posts all these uh, like relevant stuff about robotics. So yeah, that will be really helpful for the people who are just starting out. Yeah, thank you. Exactly. Ah, uh, because I get this question a lot. What are the other robotics? communities and resources out mm-hmm. there so i will see if i can put it in the description or the comment i put a post yeah. on linkedin and a bunch of people who have resources in terms of newsletters youtube channels discord and um, discord and slack communities have put it up there so you can see them all in one place right 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 So my last question to you would be that you know what like where is robotics uh, going in India or like what where do you see robotics like what is the future of robotics as far as India is concerned and what will you suggest suppose I want to pursue robotics so what will you suggest me like should I stay in India or should I move to US to pursue robotics what would be your suggestion So definitely a lot of factors come into play for it so for example money visa your personal mm-hmm. family relationships and all of those things now when it comes to the scope of robotics in india i think it's growing like when i was starting out i used to not know a single robotics company now uh, i know i can't think of them right now but there are a couple mm-hmm. of robotics companies in india so it's growing a little slowly but it's growing that is what i would say when it comes to coming to the us the reason i came was because back then there weren't a lot of opportunities in india Okay. second i wanted to do a masters now the other thing about coming to the us is definitely visa so compared to other countries that i know of us has a lot of good opportunities but the visa is a big uh, what do you say a big hurdle sure. and mess to deal with so just keep that in mind and yeah the other factor is you know if you want to stay with your family or if you have other things that you need to keep in mind so all of those factors do come into account so yeah just think about all those things through um yeah but the what do you say the opportunities that i see in robotics in us is huge there is a significant increase in the number of companies that exist in us versus india at least to my knowledge so that is one of the reason i chose to came here and that is something that you should see for yourself yeah i think it will like vary from person to person what the yeah, person exactly. exactly wants yeah yeah so these were all the questions from my side kajal i hope it helps a lot of students who are just starting out in this field and are new to this field right yeah i Thank hope you. so too 
So the only advice I would give is try and see if this is something you want to do. And it's completely fine if you don't. And I do hope that me coming and sharing some of my experiences helped you out. And thank you for watching. Make sure you subscribe to Muskan's channel. Thank yes. you, Muskan, for having me. Both our channels. Yes, both our channels. I'll and put the link yeah, in the Muskan description. Doing... Sorry? I'll put the link in the description. Yes, link in the description. But Muskan has some really amazing content on different things you can do within tech. And it's a great resource to figure out what options exist when you're doing your bachelor's. So all the very yeah. best. Thank you. Thank you so much, Katil. And yes, guys, thank you so much for watching. And we will see you in the next video. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. To stop the recording.